Good day to all of you. My name is Maria Konjelska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Today we take you to a fascinating journey through video games. With us is Marysia Piątkowska. Hello. Thank you very much for coming. And you are a video games writer. I would say a very mysterious job, but it's <laughs> but it seems to be a really growing and growing the whole industry and especially in Poland. Uh, you are working in a flying wild hog uh, company. Previously, you were working in a CA Games, and both are a uh, Polish. Both of those Polish companies actually flourishing and creating a lot of video games, and mostly in English. Tell us a little bit about who actually is a uh, video games writer. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you for such wonderful introduction. Uh, yes, I am a game video game writer. And actually, I write games. Uh, as the name suggests, um, we actually use and take advantage of the film industry, you know, knowledge and all the tools connected with uh, script writing and so on. But uh, we have to, of course, remember that uh, video games are interactive medium. So we have to take into account uh, the player's choices. There are games that are actually linear and non-linear. Uh, as you may know, Witcher is a non-linear example where there are many, many choices that the player can make um, considering uh, it is the, the plot choice or the gameplay choice and so on. Uh, I actually um, write linear games so far. Uh, that's where I was working at CA Games and right now at Flying Wild Hog. Uh, we are doing uh, linear games uh, with not so many choices. Uh, but still, we have to remember that the player's inf influence on the game, on the plot, is very, very important. So we have to uh, create such structures in the uh, plot, in the story, that the player may, you know, uh, may not be pushed into the stories by force, by, by, by us as the designers, right? So we have to remember that the player may uh, go somewhere and enjoy, I don't know, NPC's life, for example, or he overhear some of the dialogues, or just, you know, loot the, uh, the dead bodies of the enemies just to uh, gather some gold or other things. And One question is yeah. which comes to me immediately is the fact, uh, are there so in such opportunities that I, the choices of a of a player uh, lead to a different ending? Uh, yeah, can be. I mean, not in the games I was doing so far, because this is this linear uh, structure. Yes. So we, as the designers, create the epilogues. But The Witcher, uh, as the, the perfect example, this is the, uh, the example of the non-linear uh, structure. So uh, there are choices during the game, the whole, you know, very, very long uh, plot. And depending on the actions that the player will do and the choices that he will make there are of course possible different endings so uh, for example I have I had a different uh, epilogue uh, than my husband we were both you know playing Witcher uh, all of those expansions and so on and uh, it actually turned out that he actually did so much different story than me <laughs> See, yeah, so it was a different, different experience, yes. Okay, that's why we, how we have a different experience as well in gaming. Okay, but come back come back to learn mm -hmm. writing linear games, what you are doing. Tell us a little bit about that, the, the, the whole structure. What would you have to especially remember when it is a game? Is it like dialogues, a variation of those dialogues? Uh, do you write also anything about uh, the surrounding or how things look like? Is it... I am responsible actually for the uh, for the old texts that are in the game, uh, and these are of course the main dialogues are like those cutscenes, so those you know the very film-like scenes, uh, dialogues in game, uh, which are the texts that the player character is speaking throughout the levels, 
Uh, also, all of the uh, background dialogues, like you know, some ambient sounds uh, that are actually delivered by the M NPCs, like other characters in the game. Uh, of course, all those uh, texts that are written on the screen, which is um, professionally speaking, the UI, right? So the user experience, uh, all of the, the things that you see on the screen, right? So like the objective, where you have to go, or uh, what kind of a weapon you're using now, every text is actually written by us, by the writers. Yeah. I see. So because so it's it's it looks like a puzzle, a lot of yeah. elements <laughs> which have to be there and which you have to remember about. Yes, yes, all of it, because we have to make sure we as the writers um, that are people most responsible for the coherence of the story, of the plot in the game, we have to remember about this um, this narrative, that it ha it has to be, you know, connected with the plot, it has to be connected with the lore, the, the setting that we are exploring as we, as the players. And uh, all of it should be coherent, yeah, so that uh, plot is not different than the gameplay, which is a very, very common problem for the games, that the plot goes uh, itself and the gameplay goes by itself. Itself, uh, because some, sometimes those mechanics that are implemented by the game design, like you know uh, animations or actions that the player may uh, may use, um, it should be connected with the with the story, right? And we have to remember about this um, uh, synergy or let's say a marriage between the gameplay and the plot. Well, it all, all sounds fascinating <laughs> and we'll develop this topic in the next episode. So to all of you, the viewers of Film Daily at Culture, those of you who are fans of video games, this seems like an incredibly expanding industry with a lot of choices and with a lot of opportunities. So absolutely stay with us for another episode because we, I hope we'll reveal a little bit more secrets.